fun day. Guys, check it out. We're gonna go through the entire park. We're gonna go to every land. We're gonna check in on every attraction. And we're gonna give you a sneak peek of that 60th anniversary tour. All coming up next on Fresh Bay. This is our State of Universe report. Universal Studios, let's go. Whew. It's a Thursday afternoon here at about uh, 2.30. We're here dual purpose today. We're shooting this state of Universal Report. We're gonna be going throughout the park and updating you on everything that's happening around here, checking in, taking the temperature of Universal Studios. When that's done, we got AP preview tonight of the updated 60th anniversary tram tour. Two videos in one. Uh, so we're gonna be doing that after this, but for now, we're here, we're at, State, or we're at Universal. Let's head down Main Street, pick up the vibe of what's happening here at Universal Studios. And things are looking quite chill if we're talking about vibes. The vibe is quite chill. I am already seeing a ton of references being made to the anniversary, the 60th anniversary of the studio tour. They're selling popcorn buckets at Hollywood and Dine. They've changed the menu. What's this? We got some anniversary. Oh, I don't know if we can pick this up. Old TVs showing old footage of the Backlot Tour. And there's the Glamour Tram. Cool. It's not at all crowded as we walk down the street. And I, I guess we're here on a weekday and it's later on in the afternoon. Normally we're here a little earlier in the day. Park closes at 7 p.m. tonight, I believe. So it could be why there are fewer people in the park right now. Look, at we got characters out in force. There's Frankenstein and Dracula scaring the bejesus out of guests. We saw uh, Shrek and Fiona earlier. Beetlejuice. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a quite a fun afternoon so far getting, getting the show started. And look, these guys are back out here. We've got, well, I, I almost called them Officer Blue. And these two up here in the windows. <laughs> we'll take that left, head towards Secret Life of Pets. I think I'm being stalked by Dracula. And Scooby-Doo. And Shaggy. Hi. Uh, now here, look, this is, this is different. They've got, they, they've been redressing some of these locations out here, these outdoor vending locations to the Glamour Tram theme. There's a, there's a uh, image of the Glamour Tram that's with Woody Woodpecker driving. We actually ran into Miguel and Janelle earlier this afternoon and they have purchased that, that popcorn bucket already, which is great. This, I, I walked by this, I'm like, is that how that used to look? <laughs> it turns out, no, it's not. They redressed this building as well, the city snack shop. You've got a 60th anniversary pretzel, which is awesome. They've got a 60th anniversary donut, which is a heck of a thing. I think I just want to buy the six. I don't know if I could eat all that donut. And then some 60th anniversary cookies, etc. The city snack shop looks fun. They've also got, oh, no, that's it. I thought they had another pretzel, but that's just the regular giant Bavarian pretzel. But look at, wow. And it's a beautiful day today, you guys. It's a beautiful day today. Right now, the temperature, as I open my phone, a breezy 72 degrees. And I will also advise you that I took a quick peek at the, what I would call the tip board, the, the wait time board that's over there on that main street and the, and the wait times look quite agreeable this afternoon. I wish I had more time. I don't have time because I have a, a six o'clock reservation for the Glamour Tram, so I won't be able to hit any rides today. But this is a 20 minute wait right now for Secret Life of Pets. It wouldn't even be that. <laughs> it's dead. It's practically dead. I feel like I could just walk in there and hit that attraction in no time. I'm just Because there's not very many people in the streets. And when you don't feel that pressure in the streets, it, it, it follows that that's going to go into the attraction as well. And even though it's close to 20, I feel like that's like a, a, a minimum number. That's got to be a walk-on right now. Minions Mayhem says 30 minutes. And I got to tell you, that feels like an untruth. So I'm actually walking into the queue just to see. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah, the back of the queue is out here downstairs. They're in two sections back there. 
and then obviously filling in this spot up here. Last time we went on this ride, we just walked right into that room. It's about a 10 minute cycle to get the guests in and out and do the show. So that might be 30 minutes, my goodness. Which kind of shocks me, A, because it's not very busy out here at all, and especially considering Pets is 20 minutes, but two, it's not a very good run. I don't like it, I don't like it. I like Gru though. That's the tallest Gru ever. Gru and two minions, banana. <laughs> you know, we don't often see, the last few times we've been out here, we haven't seen any sort of queue setups for these meet and greets out here. Yeah. They just kind of, you know, there's just kind of groups, but this is the first time I've seen in a while uh, a queue with stanchions and everything. Super silly fun land is open. Actually a nice day for this today, considering I, I almost feel like I want to go in there real quick. What a delight. I mean, it's a proper water park area. I mean, you can get soaked in here. It's like going to, you know, not Soak City without having to go on any slides. It's like they can get, you can get all the cooled off you want out here. It's great. The silly swirly. <laughs> this vibe is, I'm laughing because, <laughs> because uh, A, he was waving me in there. He wants me to go on the ride. Although I don't think I'm allowed to, to be perfectly honest. If I'm not under, if I'm not mistaken, don't I need to be under 48 inches? I am most certainly not under 48 inches, uh, but I have want to say that I have also been on that attraction before. They did a AP uh, after hours event here, AP only after, you know, after the park closed. And I definitely remember going on that attraction. I wonder if they just let me go because it was an after hours event. Man, I feel like we're just breezing right through this, <laughs> this state of universe report. We're just flying through here because it's, <laughs> it's so quiet and like, comfortable and at peace. It kind of reminds me of our day at Disneyland last week when we did our state of Disney and it was just, you know, practical bliss as we walked around. I mean, Universal has the potential to get quite hectic. Plenty of anxiety, although this area back here isn't usually one of those areas that gets that way. But we are now at Moulin Rouge, which means just around that corner is that crane and a whole lot of dirt. And as I teased in the intro, this might be the coolest dirt update in the history of fresh bait construction. You know, the, fir the first thing I noticed when I got to this site was just how busy it was. I've never seen so many construction workers, gotta be 50, 100 guys on this site right now, it, doing all manner of business. And you know, what's in the frame right now is just half of what's happening on this uh, hillside right now. You got a cement mixer, you got a guy moving dirt around there, you've got different... You can see they're getting ready to install something substantial right here on this, alongside this raining, retaining wall. And there are a few things that stuck out, most notably, look at all the track supports that they have installed since we were here last. This was dirt. This was nothing but dirt last, last month. This month we can see all kinds of concrete piers. Or posts. I'm not sure <laughs> there's a term for that, but I'm not sure which one is correct here. Uh, but and then down the way a little bit down the hill, you can see where they're they're building a retaining wall. I saw a shadow from that crane a minute ago. Look at look at it's operating. It's craning right now. Yeah, those guys are connecting. Wow, there's just so much going on. Those, <laughs> okay, right there, he's connecting the harness to whatever it is that they're lifting there. I'm not sure what that is yet. Meanwhile, look at that. You got a front loader over down there just moving dirt around <laughs> this whole time. And you got this guy, he's got dirt scooped up in that thing. And he's going to say, he's going to put it in the back of this truck. Why? It's interesting. I, I, I observed this, this, by the way, stalls out here, this little effort to put the dirt in the back of that truck stalls out. But there's the whole thing is made of dirt. Why? What? <laughs> Why are they why are they trucking the dirt off the side? I don't know. Here we go. Okay. 
So the crane is uh, in motion, and I, I'm going to say that looks like a form. That looks like a you know one of the concrete um, piers or posts. I'm not sure which for the support, you know, track support. That's a form, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm guessing they need that form to do something just like it elsewhere on the work site. Yep, they're going to put that th form right down here and my assumption is that that somewhere in that area you're going to see another track support develop <laughs> there's another <laughs> dirt scooper guy over here on top of the hill he's playing king of the hill over there i uh, yeah so they're gonna they're, we are fast and furious into building literal track supports for the literal fast and furious roller coaster yeah i'm pretty sure that was a concrete form for those supports because it was the exact same shape as those square concrete supports are now, so uh, my get, that's why I feel like it's a form that they've they've done it. They they filled it up with concrete, and now they can go use it somewhere else. I I just thought that they dismantled those on site and then, you know, put them back together where else they needed them. But maybe it's quicker to use this super enormous crane. Maybe it's quicker to just pick up the form and put it over there. I don't know. That's a lot of concrete. And by the way, that gives you an indication where the track is going to be. Right, so the track is going to run along that length right there, uh, up up much higher. Obviously, it's going to be you know super high. They're gonna they're gonna uh, uh, append a lot more concrete and support to that initial structure there, the initial foundation or whatever you want to call it. You're looking, they've attached another one. There's another form going up up in a way there. Meanwhile, here we go. Here's your order of dirt. great he's gonna get another another load man there's so much happening and still the expectation is no sooner than the end of 2025 we're still as fast as things are moving here it's still gonna be another year and a half probably before we see this thing finished you also got a glam a glamour tram down there <laughs> look at that that's just so much dirt like, what's the point if it's just going to fall off the side of that truck? Anyway, there he goes. He's taken off. He's going to go move that dirt somewhere else. This is fantastic. This is the greatest dirt update in the history of construction. And there goes that other form. They're going to drop that off in the same work site. So they can build more concrete posts. Amazing. Fantastic. Stupendous. There is the launch platform. Looks about like we left it, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see a lot of difference here from than what we saw a month ago. Oh, oh, look at this. Okay, we, we, we're over here to the escalators. And they're drilling right next to, golly, they're drilling right next to the escalator. It's so close. That's going to be a future track support, probably. Are they they gonna run it over? Is the is the track gonna go over the escalators? This is the opposite side. And last month we were talking about how there's sort of a curved nature to the piers that they were installing there, and and such. And it does look like that is the case. One, two, three, four, five, five have been. I see five concretes there. Is that right? And then there's a couple more down there where it's still in the rebar phase. They'll they'll there's a, another a form that they put on there. They'll fill that up with concrete and it'll wind up looking just like that concrete one right there. But there it does look like it's sort of it's coming it's it's turning. This looks like it's a turn. From the opposite side, we can see where, how, where they built that retaining wall. They're building the retaining wall and how they have leveled off that section of of the hill there they need to do that in order so they can because you can't just start building that stuff into the side of a hill at an angle you have to flatten that out a little bit and that guy's moving more dirt you got the front loader moving dirt and the <laughs> that's so great oh uh, man okay yeah see there's some of those they look like i-beams that's what we watched them install. That was the very beginnings of what we saw them installing last month. 
are and they, they've since then they have put in we saw one maybe two no no we saw a couple they were just kind of barely peeking out now we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine double that maybe 18 of them and then from the opposite side we can see them still drilling that hole i wonder how deep they got to make that but you can see it's just spinning spinning rotating and then up it comes here we go this is the best part nice that doesn't seem like a lot of dirt to be honest for as long as that thing is is going into the ground that doesn't seem like a lot of dirt incredible this is uh this is really really fun i'm really enjoying watching them build this roller coaster on the side of a hill <laughs> one of the coolest dirt updates we've ever done awesome awesome right <laughs> i wish we could get a view like that of literally any project whatsoever at disneyland the closest thing we get to is the mark twain of trying to look over those balls at the haunted mansion but there's so many trees here. That's a wide open view, man. It's so, so good. We'll note on our way out of here that the walls are down at the Moulin Rouge, so they have finished whatever it is that they were doing. I don't know if it was painting those windows. I don't recall what the color or texture of those windows were before, but this is reopened. This is for the people who are doing the VIP tours. It's a private dining location, apparently. Oh, I can actually see in there. It's a buffet. Was that always there? I've never taken any kind of VIP tour, so... No, actually, I take that back. I did do this once. Not here. We did the VIP tour in Orlando, Universal Orlando. And we had a breakfast. We had a VIP private dining breakfast, if I recall. Which was pretty good. Great way to start the morning. Someday. Someday in the faraway future, there's going to be a giant roller coaster right there. Going too fast and kind of furious. But they do it all for the family. Still nothing happening out here in this plaza, the central plaza. I, I think they may be waiting because they're going to be doing some other kind of event here soon. No point in installing anything. But this feels like an interesting use of space. I've always wondered, Disney would never let a space like this just go. Well, I take that back. They do that routinely. That's a foolish statement, isn't it, David? <laughs> Disney's got at least two in park stages stage 17 and stage 12 over at the hollywood backlot that have been vacant for years well one of them was i know they're using another one for i think rehearsals now then you've got the whole espn zone uh you've got the innovations building so uh, i'll just retract everything i just said kung fu panda is 15 minutes which i believe is just one show i think it's about a 15 minute rotation between shows so that's the minimum yeah you have a good Donkey's time out there enjoy yourself hi right, what's up bro how you doing today man he's on fire doing great thank you for asking what's your name daddy nice to meet you today can i get a photo with you wow thank you very much. that guy that guy's great i almost want to pull over and get a, get a picture of a donkey that's your launch right? oh you see that right there that gray bar i don't know if i mentioned this in the construction report but that gray bar right there that is track or what's going to wind up being part of track oh what's he lifting we got actual crane doing crane business right now too looks like a form and it's going down Next up is Hogsmeade and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. As I understand it, the ice cream shop is open. We're going to check in on that. We'll also check in on the situation with the lockers and then figure out what the status is of Forbidden Journey. And more, of course. And I have to assume that Florian's, Florian Fortescue's, will have some butterbeer ice cream. I feel like maybe we should not waste any time and get a scoop of ice cream and enjoy it while we walk around Hogsmeade. Oh, look at that. It is. It is open. They have reorganized this whole area back here completely. Before, when you entered, there was, you know, the, the glass case was running this way and you could purchase your usual dessert treats here, which are still here. You can still get the usual stuff. But they've, re they've reorganized the 
the wrap here, the cash register and everything, and taken out the, the gift shop that was back here, the Weasley Brothers gift shop, and now we can get, and there it is, butterbeer ice cream. They have more flavors. Uh, orange, mint, butterbeer, banana, vanilla, pistachio, toffee apple, granny smith, toffee nut, and chocolate served in a cup or in a souvenir cup or in a waffle cone. I think we're gonna get butterbeer in a cup. There's no chance that I'm gonna waste my first try of the pouring port skew ice cream and not get the butterbeer ice cream, am I right? There it is, butterbeer ice cream. I got a cone because I will not be able to eat this and film at the same time. Now, now I can multitask a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is butterbeer ice cream, that's for sure. That is terrific. Oh my gosh, I love soft serve. Just even vanilla soft serve is great, but this is great too, or even better I should say. But I better get to work on this because it's a little toasty out here and it's gonna melt all over me. In fact, let's just take a stroll through Hogsmeade for a little bit, one of my favorite things to do. Just be here, this is, you know, a pretty great thing to do here at Hogsmeade is just to be here. We'll take a stroll, I'll finish off my ice cream and then we'll update you guys on what's happening around the land. Well, it sure does feel a little bit busier in here today as opposed to how it's been so far in the rest of Universal Studios. There's Forbidden Journey. We should go check in on the standby wait time there, shall we? 15 minutes. That seems impossible. I don't know if I've ever seen 15 minutes at Forbidden Journey. We should have missed it. This queue actually is just to get into the locker room, <laughs> which explains why they need to improve their locker situation. We'll get into that in a minute, but uh, we don't need a locker. So I am probably just going to scoot around here if I can. My goodness. Buddy. This is enough to give somebody some severe anxiety. There we go. Stand by to the left. It's so dark in here. you guys see in the mirror? I saw myself winning the Masters with a birdie on 18. So far so good. Where would 15 minutes be, I wonder? It's definitely inside Maybe all the way to uh, the dark arts room, at least, right? Certainly there's nobody up here. I don't want to go all the way in there because that'll just take forever. Certainly that was a brisk looking queue. <laughs> I mean, I have a feeling that it could have gone all the way to the front of the queue. I, 
I don't get the sense that there was very many people, just like before, I don't get the sense that there's any kind of density to these crowds today. Forbidden journey, 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm looking at Flight of the Hippogriff right now and it says 25 minutes. Uh, certainly that's not an issue of demand or, you know, popularity, but <clears throat> of capacity. Forbidden Journey can handle quite a few more guests at a time than Flight of Hippogriff can. You know, you got just the one train going and then they're loading another train, that's it. That's all you can do. And there's, what, 12 people in that train right now? But still, that's, <laughs> that's kind of wild. You know, normally you would just never see that. Uh, Forbidden Journey would almost always be a, a greater weight than Flight of Hippogriff, but here we are. Yeah. That looks to be about 25 minutes, if you ask me. They're using quite a bit of this queue. That's wild. As promised, we'll check in on the locker situation out here. These are going to be the lockers that are replacing the ones that are in Forbidden Journey. Uh, they're behind Scrim right now, so we can't really see anything. Oh, well, we can, actually. We can confirm that what we suggested or, or assumed last time we are here, we saw uh, that they get mesh. They're getting ready to apply some rock work. You can now see that that rock work is being applied to the exteriors of that uh, of the locker situation. Still no guess as to how many there will be, if it's, a, if it's a greater supply than there was inside. I'm not sure if the the situation, the conditions inside that lo you know, locker area in Forbidden Journey is a question of supply or a question of abundance of lockers or if it's just so narrow that, that you know it's very tight quarters in there. In either case, that solution is going to eclipse probably either one of those problems. So good to see them doing this. Just can't believe how things are going this today. I mean, we're just breezing through this state of Universal Report. We can breeze through any of the queues that we've seen. There's not a single attraction that I've been like, no, nah, I'll pass. Not a single one. Not even uh, Flight of the Hippogriff. Not even at 25 minutes. Because, you know, that's a pleasant queue to be in for 25 minutes. I don't mind that one bit. Uh, as a matter of fact, as we pass by Ollivander's here, uh, it says 20 minutes on the sign back there. It's a decent collection of guests back there. I'm saying that's probably maybe uh, just two shows. So we have to wait, you know, you have to wait for multiple iterations of the event. So, uh, I mean, it looks busy in the streets right here, but I think these are just people, this is kind of like a Disneyland situation where they're just happy to be here. They don't necessarily have to be doing anything. Uh, just, you know, being in Hogsmeade. One of the uh, barometers that I always have for if it's a busy day at the Wizarding World is to check in on... Hi guys! Hi! Hi. Hi. Uh, is to check in on the three broomsticks just to see if there's any kind of weight at all because they have such slow uh, service here. It's, it, it, does not, it does not go quick though. It, goes, it takes forever though. So it, it, it has a tendency to build a, a, a big queue, but I can see right now there is no queue. Uh, you can walk right up and place an order right now. There is nobody back here, which is a shame because it's kind of fun back here. If you're ever curious, you know, what to get while you're here at the Three Broomsticks, if you've never been here before and you don't know what to, what to order, what sounds good, they've got all the food set up here in little windows. There's the fish and, sti or fish and chips, the sticky toffee pudding, and the fresh baked apple pie. Bangers and mash, that actually looks quite appetizing right now. And that's some kind of cobbler and a salad, I guess? I don't know. There's the Great Feast. I've had this a couple times before. It's a little bit of everything. Here are the ribs with corn and potatoes. And then the herb roasted chicken platter. I'm not even sure if this is everything. I feel like it's not. And of course, yes, there is plenty of seating here. I wish. Wouldn't it be cool if you could sit up here, though? One of these days, they're going to have to figure that out. Although, obviously, I don't see any sort of foundation <laughs> for it to set up there. They would have to, they, it, it would lose most of its charm in order to make it suitable for guests to sit up there. It would lose all of that charm. So that's too bad, but I would love to go up there. Look at that, man, that crane's still working. Whew, that's, that's the fastest I think I've ever seen that crane move. Wow, what are they up to? They're just moving stuff around. I've, I've been watching them move forms around most of the day. But we've already done our construction report from Fast and Furious. We'll hang a right and head into 
Springfield, Simpsons Land. Admittedly, I do not have a voluminous history here at Universal Studios. Not anywhere near what I have, let's say, at Disneyland. But I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever had such a breezy walk through Simpsons Land. There's just, <laughs> there's hardly anybody, comparatively speaking, relatively speaking, as many times as I've been through here, and it's been just completely bonkers, wall-to-wall -wall people. People love being in Simpsons Land. I don't think I've ever had as comfortable and relaxing walk through the land. Let's go take a look at some of these restaurants in here and the Simpsons ride to see how busy it is inside. Like Krusty Burger, when's the last time you've been in front of Krusty Burger and seen not a single person in frame? Okay, now there's a person. Krusty Burger. They are walking in, perhaps, question mark? Uh, just a little bit of queue back there, that's it. Certainly I have been in here, but I have waited in this entire queue. I have waited in this, all of it, every last bit of it, I have. This is dead. Cletus's Chicken Shack. I would expect to find the same thing here. It usually mirrors Krusty Krab pretty much. And we were in this queue last time and we waited most of this, but it's just a short little wait. That's just a couple minutes to get yourself uh, a chicken and waffle sandwich. That was okay. And I was gonna start talking about the Simpsons ride, but I overheard the the barker at the dunk or flunk basketball shooting thing. And I heard him say it cost $15 to play this game. $15, and you know these things are rigged. All right, so like I said, you guys like to play it, that's just $15. He just said it again, he said it again, confirmed. That's, that's a pretty long shot. You know, I play a little basketball, guys. I have a fair shot. Uh, that's a pretty long shot. And in the rim, I don't know if that's a regulation rim, to be honest. Nor do I know if those are regulation basketballs. I feel like this might be the biggest ripoff in the history of Boardwalk Games. Wow, man, 15 bucks. 15 bucks for 30 seconds. That might, that is, that's, that seems impossible, even if you have a halfway decent shot. And I feel like he did, he had a halfway decent shot. Uh, I, I wouldn't play that game. We will check in on the Simpsons ride, posted at 35 minutes. I was considering, if it was, gonna, if it was 15 minutes, I was considering testing this out. But at 35, I, I don't think I'm going to today. I'm game, I'm willing for science, but as I mentioned, uh, I've got a, a, a date with a tram tonight, but that looks like a pretty healthy queue. I just wish I knew how much further it went in there. It's been 10 years maybe since I've been in this queue and I will be the first to, oh my gosh, I was just going to go into something, but Krusty's here. Look at him. He might be my favorite Simpsons character, Krusty. <laughs> He's great. Hey, Krusty. Oh, thank you, man. You're the best. I love you. Big fan. <laughs> I love Krusty. <laughs> I just had a moment. I just had a moment, man. I'm fangirling, fan guying, whatever, over Krusty just now. <laughs> that was cool. Um, yeah, admittedly, I don't feel like I could ever call myself anything resembling a, a universal guru until I start doing stuff like riding the Simpsons ride and more. I guess uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to eventually. You know what I'll do? I'll I'll do it twice in one day and make up for it, and then we'll get into it. I just I just I just man, that, that track is so bad. And I'm hearing from other people like David, your your opinion is not misinformed. It is a valid, justified opinion. Moving right along, gunga dung, gunga dung. <laughs> Sorry, 
wrong franchise, wrong park, uh, to the lower lot. Let's go check in on Jurassic World, The Mummy, Transformers, and Super Nintendo World and see if their times are as great, as favorable as we've seen in the upper lot here. Before we hit that lower lot, let's check in on Halloween Horror Nights. There's a house being built right here. Last year, this was the Last of Us house, if memory serves. They've, they've certainly come a long way since last week. We saw just some, some timber set up and they hadn't really done anything except install the tent. But they're definitely starting to work on the entrance there. Great signs there. And they have, in fact, I was wondering if I was trying to remember where the other house was, but they put one right there in the middle of our frame. Right there, I have no idea what that house is or what it was last year. I can't place it. It's not. Oh man, I can, why can I not place that one? I feel like they, have they always put one there? I'm not an expert, admittedly. I'm not an expert on Halloween Horror Nights. There are certainly better informed channels than this one. I'm trying, I am willing to learn and I'm trying. But uh, that was nowhere near that last, last time we here. A month ago, that was nothing. That was still street. What those houses are, nobody knows. There is some light speculation out there. Uh, there is rumors of there being a Ghostbusters themed house, rumors of a Saw themed house, uh, a quiet place. I know Bloom House is probably gonna do something, they often do, but the news so far has been pretty light and cryptic. Stay tuned, we'll try to catch up on that as much as possible and let you guys know in our next installment. And the story continues down here on the lower lot. Nice and light and breezy. Hardly any, my gosh, hardly anybody in the streets down here. Comparatively speaking, again, this is all relative. We'll start right here at the Mummy with a standby wait time of 25 minutes. That's pretty great for the Mummy. It isn't often that you see a short wait, I mean, a super short wait, I mean like a 15 minute wait for the mummy. Uh, not often at all, because that's one of those attractions that draws uh, their fast lane, their express lane. So 25 minutes is pretty awesome. And I, would, I would like to see that at Jurassic World and Transformers. I don't know, what would we expect at Bowser's Challenge? 40, 60? I feel like 45 is light, 60 is about typical. I don't know, Transformers is next. <laughs> you know, as ch <laughs> every time I come through here, I find another reason to like this attraction more. Even though it's a cr it's a it's a crappy sort of fake facade like Monsters Inc. with the cardboard cutouts, it's still kind of a cool entrance to an attraction, if you ask me. Because they sell it, you're going into like this top secret facility uh, <laughs> that actually advertises what it is out here in front of the facility. Thirty minutes standby, but uh, one thing I'll notice as we stand out here, is that there's hardly any guests going in. Just those two right now. Oh, that may explain why. She just told them to, you can't come in. It doesn't say anything here, it says 30 minutes, but it looks like that's closed. Interesting. There's a new Transformers movie coming out soon. There was just a trailer release today, I think, for Transformers 1, Chris Hemsworth. Gotta check that out. I heard also that they're doing a crossover with G.I. Joe, a Transformers G.I. Joe crossover, which I have to admit, G.I. Joe movies are kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. Do you think they would bring back Channing Tatum for that? I don't know. Let's go to Super Nintendo World. Wow. We've set a new record for breeziest visit to Super Nintendo World. The story has continued down here. Incredible. Positively delightful. I have no stress whatsoever being here right now. Not even a little bit. Well, except for the sound. It's still a very noisy land. Kind of like being in Avengers Campus. But uh, this, is, this is quite nice, guys. You don't even hear as many of that. You aren't hearing the, the constant 
<laughs> the constant ringing of the, uh, <laughs> of, the, of the question mark blocks, man, and the coins. That's wild. You can still join the wait list right now for Toads to a Cafe. That's terrific. Uh, I called, I was hoping for 45, but was expecting 60. And it looks like we're getting somewhere in the middle of Mario Kart Bowser's channel or challenge. 50 minutes. Last time we came through, we went directly upstairs. We didn't even go into the upper lot or the outside lot or the, uh, you know, the queue areas. And we could just check right, yeah, look, it's the same thing. Incredible. They're going straight to the staircase. I feel like that's not even 50. I'm gonna go take a look at the queue from the lookout area. Well, there you go. There's the top section is does have queue or gets in the queue, but it's maybe two thirds, maybe a half full. Uh, I see guests walking towards. So the back of the queue is somewhere in that frame. Wow, that's still pretty light, but that could be 50 minutes. It could be. Meanwhile. Nobody is in the single rider queue right now. Single rider is a near walk-on. As for the land itself, look at that. This is what it looked like, you guys, when, it, when, the, when the land first opened about a year ago. It's been about a year, a little over a year now. This is what it looked like from up here a little over a year ago. And <laughs> see, I, thought this, I thought this demand would last forever. I really did. But here's the thing. This is an interesting point. There is probably a selection of guests, a subset of guests who just need to see it the one time. Uh, or they may not be that impressed with Bowser's Challenge. Bowser's Challenge as an attraction is good, but I can, I can see why there would be reasons for complaint. I like the immersiveness of it. I like the theming of it. I like the way it's really well designed. You know, it's the production values are high, but the actual gaming part of it is subpar. So uh, there's probably going to be a, a percentage of guests who are like, okay, I did it. I don't really want to go through that again. I'm not interested in waiting 90 minutes to, find, to, to get to this attraction. And meanwhile, the land itself is it's just bonkers, it's crazy, it's too crowded, it's loud, and there actually really isn't a lot to do here. I mean, unless you're into the mini games, which you could be, but there's, you know, toadstools, it's impossible to get into. Well, it isn't anymore, but that could, all of those things added up, could be contributing to why you're not getting a lot of repeat visit now. Everybody has, who's done it the one time have done it. Well, not everybody, a percentage, as I said. You know, I'll still come back here every visit and try to ride Bowser's Challenge as much as I can. Uh, but I, you know, I still haven't done a single, I still have not done a single mini game ever. Never have. So uh, I feel like that could be adding to it. So I, I'm wondering if really there is, is there enough demand for an expansion? Because they're talking about, they're talking about a lot of things. And they're up in the air. At, at, at first I thought it was a no brainer. If you've got expansion plans, go ahead and add that to Super Nintendo World. But maybe you do build a, a Pokemon town. Or maybe you do build a Zelda land. Maybe. Just listen. There was a time, not that long ago, when that sound was constant. Constant. Everywhere, everywhere you went, it was constant. There's nobody, nobody hitting the, the question mark block right now. Nobody. <laughs> What's going on? That's next. Speaking of sequel news, Scarlett Johansson has been connected, tied to the next installment of Jurassic Park World, whatever. I don't know if they're gonna continue a sort of new trilogy or if it's gonna continue the Jurassic World trilogy. I feel like she should get her own. No more Chris Pratt, he's too busy doing voiceovers for every single other movie. Let's, yeah, let's start with the ScarJo. Let's do it. 
And Jurassic World is currently at 40 minutes, which, okay, now we're getting a little bit closer to reality. You guys remember last time we were here, though, it was a five minute wait. We could literally just walk directly on. We had the entire queue. You look at this, we had the entire queue in our frame right there. There was like five guests in the queue. Doesn't look like that'll be the case here now. That's a whole bunch of express lane right there also jumping into the game. That's gonna be competitive. If I'm not mistaken, this ride was closed for a bit earlier. I thought I saw it down or closed on the wait time board not long ago, maybe a half an hour ago. So that could be why there was a big, you know, a lot of sudden demand for the attraction. But yeah, we got one section full. And two sections full. So if it's 40 minutes, then that means that each section should be about 20 minutes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to time one switchback. As I look at this pen right now, there are one, two, three, four lanes at 20 minutes. If we're assuming that's the case, then each lane should be five minutes. So all we got to do is measure one of these and see if it takes them five minutes. Or, or actually just figure out however long it takes them to navigate the length of that switchback and then multiply that by, well, there's four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one's actually a little bigger. This one's nine, right? One, two, no, do I have that right? One, two, no, that one's three, four. That's four also. Why am I going cross-eyed looking at this? And then there's, well, actually, now I take that back. There's another one. There's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five total. So that's. Or not five, that's 13 total. So now we're looking at about three minutes per if it is a 40 minute wait. We're watching me figure this out live. I have never actually done any Q math on this attraction before, I've never measured anything. But now my best guess is three minutes per switchback. Fascinating, let's find out. So I have been watching for a little while and it is about three minutes up and then three minutes back, three minutes per switchback. That seems to be the case. So if you can count however many switchbacks there are, that'll be your number. Interestingly, while I've been here, while I've been watching this queue, they have the demand that we talked about being because the attraction was closed has grown or continue to collect guests. So this queue has been forming. When we got here, they were just filling that in. No cast member has shown up to push and extend this out to another to another pen. So the queue has been growing around me. It's actually quite claustrophobic back here now. They need to get a cast member back here to expand this queue space, because look at this. All this has been added. Everything you're seeing in the frame right now has been added in about the last six minutes. And it's because uh, the, the attraction was closed and there was a huge rush of guests to come in here and they haven't been cycling guests quickly enough or adjusting the queue quickly enough and now I have to climb up on the planner here because there's just no place for me to walk. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> wow, it is, oh my gosh, how, they've got to see this, right? It's just such a collective mess back here of guests. Let me see if I can't squeeze out of here. Here we go. But that's all Q. We're still looking at Q. My goodness. So that 40, will, or 45 that it was, will certainly grow to a solid hour, I'm saying. At least an hour at this point. Before we head out of the lower lot, I did want to come back and check in on Transformers. It has reopened. The posted wait time now says five minutes and there's just a few guests streaming and certainly there's not the same sort of attraction, the same sort of pull for Transformers as there is for Jurassic World. When people see that come online, they go for it because it is the superior attraction, is it not? What is interesting though, look at this. What is interesting is the amount of guests it's gonna get from Jurassic World. People that are arrived too late for Jurassic World after that came online, they're down here in the lower lot now. They're like, what do we do now? Well, that's when they, that's when you start seeing the steady flow of guests jump in here because they see, well, we might as well go down the Transformers ride. You only, you have two options now or three, but generally speaking, Super Nintendo World, they're going to assume that's going to be crowded as well. So they're going to see a steady stream of guests coming here 
into Transformers now because they're gonna skip, they're gonna bounce out of Jurassic World. Oh, I hear, uh, who's coming in? Is it Megatron, Optimus? <laughs> I can smell it. Popcorn, broken dreams, and a dash of happiness in the air. This planet is truly revolting. You know I am here and I'm hunting him down one way or the other. Optimus Prime, the casket awaits. It's time for you to rest. In pain. The rest of you swine, listen up. You made it this far, now's your only chance at salvation. Come up here, pledge your undying loyalty to the brand, and maybe I'll keep you around. But when you do come up here, don't touch or cross this yellow line. You keep your distance from me, Earth's <laughs> coming. Trust me, you are not so close. Now that we have an understanding of how this is going to go, mess team, I see we have some willing supplicants here. Bring them to me. This is true synergy. The sky is what's up. It's this guy that has made me a Transformers me, fan. <laughs> How many bracelets are you going to wear? <laughs> well, where are they? You have the golden mushroom, you have the Luigi, and the Princess Peach. You don't have Toad or Mario. But Mario's a loser, just like Optimus Prime. <laughs> Shall I melt the chains on your neck down and make a tin can? Well, it depends. Who do you think is a better Decepticon? Messy can kick. Ronaldo can run. Maybe Messi. Good luck, tin can. He's wearing a Niners jersey. He's used to losing. Whoa! Oh, it hurts. Did you forget about Joe Montana, sir? Who are you with your piranha plant? Hi. Welcome. You are Princess Peach. You must be from this mushroom kingdom over there. Did you get to go through the green tube? <laughs> Good. Did you see anyone fall down today? I'll tell you what, man, Megatron is a master of his craft. <laughs> that guy is great. I hope those guys get paid. That's all I'm saying. I hope that they get paid well because they earn every dollar out there. Interestingly, I was talking about the spillover effect from Jurassic World. Since we, been, since we left Mummy, it's gone down five minutes. That totally ruins my theory. <laughs> my, now my, my, my suggestion is not as, as valid. Unless, unless they all went from the mummy to Transformers, I don't know. But tra that mummy ride should, uh, should have gone up. I just stuck a peek over there at Jurassic World. It's up to 55 now. You know, I don't think I've ever shown this little dino play area that they have out here. I don't even know what they call this space. <laughs> it's literally called dino play. How about that? <laughs> That's wild. Uh, I don't think I've ever shown this before. I can't bring the camera in there directly because I have no child with me, and that would be awkward, but uh, there's a whole, you know, it's like a dick site. It's fun. Looks like they either finally stretched the queue out another pen, or they've processed some of those gas because that the backup is not extending on that little pathway there. Good for them. You know, it's interesting. I, I've been saying throughout this report today that I've been zipping right through. We've been kind of accelerating through the park almost all day today. A lot of that has to do with the, the light crowds and, you know, we, and we're not going on any attractions and things have just been really breezy. But another reason is that, you know, normally I try to mix in some 
where I try to talk about whatever is newsworthy about the park that I'm reviewing that day. And I've, I've realized there's not a lot of newsworthy stuff happening right now besides that, that boat that just dropped. Uh, I mean, there is the 60th anniversary going on right now for the studio, uh, the tram tour. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll be showing you highlights of that while we talk about this because I haven't done it yet. I've got my, my reservations for about an hour from now, and that's where we're going after I wrap this up. Uh, but I'm not going to include that in this report. We're going to do a separate video on that tram tour because there's going to be some new things. You know, the earthquake scene is back up again, and there's going to be a hop-off portion where guests are going to be able to get out and take a picture at, you know, uh, let's say with a shark. Where I think at the Psycho House, that's the area that we've been watching them sort of work on building out those facades at the War, uh, War of the World site, etc. So, uh, that's kind of newsworthy. But other than that, and the new food, which uh, we didn't get into, but there's just some new food that we want to get into in a future episode, perhaps. But the, otherwise, there's not a lot of... I mean, there's Halloween Horror Nights. I, I, nothing is happening there right now. You know, Universal has not announced the new park. <laughs> it's... It's been a few months since they've announced a new park or, you know, a new attraction or something like that. It feels like they've been doing that on a regular basis. It's been kind of quiet. It's almost as if we got a little, I got a little spoiled by all that universal news happening. But we'll just have to stand by and see what happens. It's going to give Disney a, catch, a chance to catch their breath a little bit. D23 is coming up for, for Disney in uh, a few months and uh, we're hoping, expecting some big news. Obviously, we had the recent announcement of the vote in favor of Disney for the Disneyland Forward, but that's another park and another conversation for another day. I guess we stuck in a few clips there. <laughs> so some highlights of that 60th anniversary tram tour. Not the whole thing. We're gonna do a separate video covering that whole experience with this tram. Actually, we're gonna do that plus the entire hour's experience on our uh, Fresh Baked uh, Acoustic Channel, the Tourist Departing Channel, Tourist Departing Daily Channel. Stay tuned for that as well. So we're gonna do three versions of this. I hope you guys enjoyed. What an amazing day. This was a fun day. Uh, I'm really uh, I'm curious to see what the crowds are gonna look like in the coming months. We're gonna be back here in a couple weeks to check this out again. We're gonna be checking out some of that food. Uh, I'm looking at Miguel and Janelle right over there. They tried some of that food. You guys check out their video. There you go. There's Miguel and Janelle. They're not, they don't even know they're on the camera right now. Just say hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm just telling them to watch your, watch your video of the food you guys tried. Oh, we tried yeah. so much food. We're did, like, we're thinking, we're thinking, did you eat the six or the zero? Up. What's that? Did you eat the six or the zero of that donut? The six, the six. You had the six? Yeah. The six, okay. yeah. The six, and we also had the Woody Woodpecker hamburgers, yeah. which were fantastic. I want to try that, actually. Those oh. are actually pretty good. I have there to get you a, a lot of misses, though. A lot of misses. A lot of okay. misses. Well, that's, it's universal. Mm, yeah. You know, well, sometimes they're really great things. Yeah. I, would you please tell me which ones those are because yes i can tell you <laughs> i can tell you <laughs> three broomsticks three, three broomsticks, broomsticks yeah oh and minions minions cafe minions is, is good great. have you tried their yeah. their uh the oh, cheese sandwich 
The what? The uh, toasted cheese. Oh sandwich. yeah, that's the one that's I that's, my favorite. That was yeah. great. Yeah, that yeah. was good. Yeah. The nachos are good. I actually really, really like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the Three Room Six, I think, is the best restaurant they yeah. have yeah. here at Universal. But and Toadstool. Toadstool's great too. Yeah. Sometimes it's all right. It's, you'll, it's <laughs> I haven't tried everything yet. Yeah. You have to. I haven't tried the uh, the green chili, or I mean the 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 pesto burger. Is it? The Luigi. That's good. I oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I is that, like that one. the yeah. pesto? Is it pesto material? I don't remember. It is I can't pesto. remember. It's a long time. I haven't pesto. had the Luigi yet. <laughs> the pesto with the arugula, it's really good. Yeah. All right. Really good. All, right. all the foods they, they start to blur out because it's just so many. We yeah. try so they many, they all blend, they blend. sometimes. Yeah. Unless it's really good. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, they just wrapped the 60th tour of the West. We're wrapping our state of universe report. I hope you guys enjoyed. Follow us on Instagram at underscore fresh baked. Uh, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's Fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. If you like our show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. If you like this guy and this girl, follow them on <laughs> Magic Journeys. Thank you. <laughs> they are the best in the business at this. I'm always waving like this. Huh? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We love you. Bye. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh Baked. Fresh Baked.